Hi again. We're going to do a projectile problem uh, now. Um, this is an interesting problem. We have a missile. Again, you can read the problem there, but let me draw it for you. <clears throat> we need to get a visual, visual um, aspect of this problem. So here's the ground down here. Here's a cliff, it's 50 meters high. And we fire a missile this way at an angle alpha of 35 degrees. This missile accelerates, meaning goes on a straight line, maintaining the same acceleration. Obviously, you're gonna draw a straight line. Say for four seconds, okay? So that's the distance the missile travels in four seconds, accelerating at 10 meters per second squared. We know the angle right here. <clears throat> at the four second mark, the missile keeps going, but it releases a package right here at the four second marks, four second mark. Now the payload is gonna obviously, whatever speed the missile has right here is gonna be the same speed and it's gonna take off and go something like this under the Earth's gravity. And the missile, of course, will keep going up. We don't worry about the missile. So again, missile launches at 50 meters per second, 35 degrees, acceleration 10 meters per second squared, continues along the same path for four seconds. And at the four second mark, it releases a payload. So the payload's gonna be at the same speed that the missile was over here. And it's just gonna be like somebody threw it at an angle and then it just goes up, then gravity will bring it back down. Well, that is that is the problem we're gonna be solving. And these are the questions I were asked. How high it is, is it from here to there, the maximum height? What velocity does it strike the ground with? How long after it's launched, it hits the ground and how far from the cliff it hits. So here we have two basically problems, okay? The first four seconds, the missile basically and the payload move a distance X this way. And from here, from this point, they move a certain distance y, okay? And although they start at uh, basically 50 meters per second at 35 degrees, after four seconds, since they're accelerating at 10 meters per second squared, it's gonna be a different speed right here, okay? It's going to be a different speed there. And now, that speed is the one we're going to use. So let's do part one right here. And then from here, the basically hits the ground. After the release, it will be part two, okay? And let's do them separately because we need to get the information for part one to use for part two. So what equations do we use? Now, <clears throat> for, you know, basically projectile motion, we have for the X, there is the equation. That's the only equation we use for projectile motion. And for Y, we have three equations. This is the final velocity in the Y. There is the initial, the acceleration times T. Now the acceleration could be plus or minus G and I'm taking G to be 10 meters per second squared, of course, an approximation. And A could be plus or minus G, depending on our choice of axis, whether it's up positive or down positive. And then you'll have this one. And the last one, that shouldn't be a negative. All right, so now this is the, um, 
this is the four seconds we're going to consider first. How far did it move horizontally? How far did it go up vertically? And at what speed? Uh, it's in the same direction, but at what speed will the projectile or the uh, payload be released at this point? So let's go on to the next page. <clears throat> let's just draw the situation. So here's what we have. Here's the missile going up 50 meters per second. And it moves a distance X after four seconds. You know, this is after four seconds. And it goes up a different Y, at a distance Y. And it gets here, say, and here at this point, we have a velocity vector. This again, serves as the initial velocity for the next stage when the payload, payload gets released. So now how far did it go in the X? Now this is an accelerating object. It has an acceleration and a velocity both at 35 degrees. So let's write down the distance. Again, assuming here's my axis right there. The X will be X zero plus V zero X T plus one half A X T squared. Now here, this is not projectile motion. This is initial velocity in the X and acceleration in the X. And the same thing for Y. Y is Y zero plus V zero Y T plus one half A Y T squared. And the velocity final V in the X will be V zero in the X plus A X times T and V Y be V zero in the Y plus A Y times T. And again, if this is X, if this is V, okay, or V zero if you want. So here's V zero X. That's V cosine 35 and then V zero Y is V zero sine 35. How about the acceleration? Again, the acceleration still go, you know, it's at 10 meters per second squared, that's A. So A sub X will be A cosine 35. Again, there's a 35. And then A sub Y will be 10 sine 35. Now we can plug all those in here, right? We know the time, we know the velocities, we know the accelerations. So let's compute X, that's again, that's within the four seconds. X, we plug numbers in is zero here, plus V zero X, it's V cosine 35, plus one half AX, AX, is A cosine 35 T squared. Uh, we can factor out a cosine 35, it's really not a big deal. And then uh, Y, right, is zero plus V zero sine 35 T, there's a T here, plus one half A, sine 35 T squared, okay? And now we can compute VX and VY. V0X, that's V0, cosine 35 plus A, cosine 35t and vy is v0 sine 35 plus a sine 35t. These all work good. And if this is what, what people wanna do, that is fine. But let's just take one equation here. And then let's just take this one, for example, the x zero. Let's just look at the x. So x is x zero 
Let's factor out the cosine 35. That's V zero T plus one half A T squared. And then here's the cosine 35. We can compute this. We can plug in 50 for here, four seconds for here, 10 here. This is four squared. Obviously this is zero. I multiply by cosine 35 and get a number. And the number you will get uh, it's roughly about 230. So it's 229.36 meters. But if we can look here, we see there's a lot of cosines and sines and angles and all of that. We can simplify all this. It's extremely, extremely simple, okay? So here's how we do it in a very simplified way. The missile started here and four seconds took it to here. It must have traveled a distance here, let's call it D. Remember, here's the V zero and the acceleration is in the same direction. So how far is D? Just D right here. Since the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction right here along this line, then we can write D as V zero T plus one half A T squared. And we can easily compute it. You know, this is 50 times four plus one half, this is five times 16. That's 200 plus 80 is 280 meters. Right, uh, let me see here, so 12 times 16, yeah. So now what do we do? This is the distance. So now how much of that distance is in the X? So X is the cosine 35. And now we can compute this, 280 cosine 35, let's see real quick. 280 cosine 35. You make sure your calculator is in degrees and you get 229.36. Same one as this. This is just easier, okay? And now we can easily compute Y. Y must be D sine 35, which is 280, again, 280 sine 35. 160.6. How about the velocity at the end of this, uh, uh, at the end of this four seconds? Well, at the end of the four seconds, the velocity again is V zero plus AT in that direction. So that is 50 plus A is 10, times t is four, so that's 90 meters per second. So at the end of the four seconds right here, so here's the velocity, what is Vx and Vy? Well, Vx is V cosine 35, or 90 cosine 35. What is that? 90 cosine 35, that's 73.72. And then Vy is V sine 35 or 90 sine 35. So here we go 90 sine 35, 51.62. And that's meters per second. So now I computed everything in the, in, in the first four seconds. Now I can start doing projectile motion. So either you could think about the first four seconds as kinematics in two dimension, not necessarily projectile, where we have initial velocity, initial acceleration, and we wanna find the final velocity and the final acceleration. The only difference is 
the initial velocity and acceleration are at an angle with the x-axis, say, 35 degrees in this case. And you could use these equations. They work out just beautifully, but they are a little bit long. You could use, since acceleration velocity are on, on the same line, so you can use just a 1D motion along this diagonal, say, and then break it up into x, y after we get the velocity and the displacement. Now we're ready to do the um, projectile motion. All right, so now what do we have? Here's the problem now. We are reformulating the problem. A package or payload is going at some V0 right here equals, uh, what is it? Uh, 90 meters per second at 35 degrees. Okay, right there. Or we can write it in terms of components. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so here 90 meters per second. It has obviously a Vx, V0x, and a V0y. Like we computed before, the x is 73 and the y is 51. So we can put 73.72 here. Okay. Doesn't want to write. I don't know why. Hmm. Sorry about this. Not sure what's going on here. All right. Let me pause it. All right. We're back. So that is 73.72 meters per second. And this is 51.62 meters per second. Now <clears throat> it's gonna go up, come back down, All right? Now, the only difference is instead of starting from 50, it's gonna start from a different height. What is this initial height right here? Remember, the old cliff was back here, and that was 50 meters. But then it went a certain distance above that, and we computed that distance. That distance is 160.60. Okay? So now the y0 for this phase, y0 here, is 50 plus 160.60. Or 210.60 meters. Okay. So if we take our axis down here at the bottom, y is positive up, x positive to the right. Let's actually move it, put it right here next to there it is. You know, like this, like this. Okay. There it is. So there's a zero X and it goes this way. And then Y zero starting from here and goes up. So how high did it go? Well, the one equation we can use and that does not involve time. It's a very easy to use is this one. Because what do we know? What do we know at this point right here? We know that this one still has a V zero X. As a matter of fact, at every point, this has a V0x. The x velocity of the component does not change. But at the top, the velocity in the y is zero. So if we take this our initial point, this is our final point. Then if this is my initial, that's my final, I can easily use this equation. And y is the only unknown. What is a? In this case, if my positive is up, gravity is down, a equals negative g or negative 10 meters per second squared. So I solve for, um, for y. So bring this over, multiply and bring over. So vy squared 
minus v zero y squared plus two a y zero over two a and plug them in zero. What's v zero y? It's the 51.62, 62 squared plus two a y. This is a negative 20. Just put the negative here. Negative 20 times 210. Let me move it over a little bit. Two ten point sixty over two a, which is negative twenty. And when you do this, you multiply things out. You get three hundred and forty-three meters, roughly. Okay. So the package now the missile is gone. We don't care about the missile. The package is three hundred and forty-three meters above ground. Yeah, that is. The first question, with what velocity does it strike the ground? Well, we can still use the equation, the one that we're using right now, but our initial and final will change, okay? So here, this was my initial, the top was my final. Right now for the second one, for, the, for, for, the, for, this, for this part, again, I, I shouldn't be drawing a cliff because I'm like over here, away from the cliff. Here's my V0. That's gonna go up, come back down. Here's my zero axis. This is my initial right now. And this is my final right here. And I can still use that same equation because Let's just write it down. I know the point I started from. That's why zero. This is the 210.60. I know my V0Y, which is uh, the 51.62. I know my A, so I know this. I know my A. Remember, A is negative G or negative 10 meters per second squared because my positive is up. G is down. I mean, A, yeah, G is pointing down. The gravity is pointing down. So it's going to be negative that. And I know what Y is because at the final position, Y is zero. I am on the ground. And I know what Y zero is. So the only unknown here is just VY. But we have to be careful. How is VY pointing at this point? So here's the ground. It's coming in at an angle like this. There is VY. There's the velocity V final. This is V final. But VY is pointing straight down. So I got to take the, the square root and then put a negative in front of it. So VY is negative. V0Y squared plus two a, actually it's a negative because this is zero, I'm gonna just drop it, right? Because at the ground it's zero, so negative two a y zero. And when you plug numbers in, again, the v zero y is uh, 51.62 squared minus two times negative 10 times two, 10.60. And when you do all this, I got, let me see what I got. Negative 82.93 meters per second. Okay. That is the velocity in the y direction. Now, what is the velocity in the x direction right here? When it hits the ground. It's the same that it started with because there's no acceleration in the X while we are in projectile motion. And what was that velocity? That was 73.72 meters per second. Yeah. So that was the second part. We just wanted the velocity that it hits the ground with. 
okay? So this is the Y, this is the X. We can easily compute V final right now, the velocity that it hits the ground with. So here's what we have now. We have a vector situation, VY, VX, and here's the direction, there's V. So V is the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. You know, plug numbers in. Um, let me see what was the numbers. Let me see here. So this is 73.72 squared. And here, since we're going to square it, it's going to be just a positive number. So 82.93. So what is that equal to? Let's see here. All righty, square root of 73.72 squared plus 82.93 squared. Enter, 110.96. We could round up to the nearest number. It's okay. I'm just keeping two sig figs. That's that's fine. So now we can compute whichever angle we want. We can compute this angle right here. So tangent theta. I want it to be a positive angle. So that will be Vx over Vy or um, 73. 0.72. Over 82.93. So we now compute the inverse tangent to get theta. So theta is inverse tangent of that ratio. So we could do it right away tan inverse of 73 over. 82.93, degrees. And that's it right here. North of east, uh, sorry, east of north, south, east of south. So it's gonna be this way, that's the angle. And I want it to be positive because it's just right here. That's why I take the absolute value. It doesn't make sense to get a negative angle here. So this angle is 41.43. Here's the magnitude. I have the final velocity. Vector needs the magnitude and direction, and I got both. Then what do they want? They want how long after it hits the ground and how far did it go from the cliff? Well, so we need time now. But time is easy to get right now, you know, you know, how long? Well, let's, again, there are four seconds that already has been established. We don't have to compute the time for that. It's already been given four seconds. But when the payload was released till it went up and came down, that took some time. How much time did that take? What equation would we use to compute that? That's a very straightforward uh, equation because we have this for the y motion. And again, here are my axes. So positive is up. A is negative G. G is 10 meters per second squared. So everything is known here except uh, T. So T equals Vy minus V0y over A. So what is Vy? We just computed that to be 82.93, negative. Negative V0Y, which is 51.62 over negative 10. So all the negatives cancel out. T comes out positive. That's great. What is that value? Let's do it real quick. So parentheses. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Let's go this way. Here, 
want to remove all the negatives. So that would be 82.93 plus 51.62 divide by 10. That's going to give me 13.46 seconds. But we had four seconds for the missile to reach that point where it launches the payload. So the total time is four plus 13.46. That's going to be 17.46 seconds. And how far did it go along in the X? So again, here's the cliff. It traveled some, it, it went some X while the missile was accelerating, was going like this. It traveled something in the X distance. We computed that already. That was here, 229.36 meters, 229.36. So that's my X zero for the projectile motion now. And then from here to there, it's just V0x times time. So again, my equation is x is x0 plus V0xt, no acceleration. So 229.36 plus, what was V0 in the x was 73.72. times the T, which was this 13.46. And when you do that, 1221.63 meters, 1.2 kilometers. That is pretty far. Okay. And that is the problem. Again, all we have is these equations to work with. Well, for projectile motion, right here, all these, where are they? Right, right there, right here. These are the equations we, uh, we are working with. Now you see what unknowns, unknowns you have and you pick the correct one, but you need to break up the problem into pieces and then work with each piece separately. Right? That's it for this video.